the games they've won. So we need to see if he's going to prioritize that maybe over the Gragas, if it goes away. Uh, a lot of questions to be answered to. Well, let's stop the speculation and get some facts as we head into Champion Select here. And the first band's out the gate, Oriana taken away from Jezus, an all-round strong pick that he's played well before. There is the Nidalee ban as well that we were just talking about, taken away from Freddy. On the other side, Zillion, which is a champion, which of course we've seen run in the middle lane as of late. We've also seen Jayree back in the spring split even run it as support. Yasuo also taken away. So something I want to highlight, in terms of Assassin mid, Fizz is still up and available, was up and available, and Kerp is a champion, a player that loves to run Assassin Champions. So, okay, Millennium, the team that has banned Cassadin on blue side more than any other team in North America or Europe, has first picked Cassadin. The theory, the myth, the story was Kerp didn't know how to play it. We're going to see how he handles it. We're going to see how well he plays it because, as you said, blue bands consistently. In fact, they did it just last week in their first match of the week against the Copenhagen Wolves. Banned it on the blue side. Today, they first pick it as it was left open. For SK, maybe they've taken a gamble and said, let the casting go. If they pick it, we can counter it. Either way, they've picked Aatrox here and Gragas. Okay, so two things. Number one. Uh, we may also even see a top lane Cassadin. It has been done in the past. It has been built tanky, you know, with the Frozen Fist, for example, and, and moving forward. On the side of Aatrox and Gragas, that could still be a top lane Aatrox and mid lane Gragas. It's not completely unheard of in Europe, at least. And you, we've seen a lot of players getting lots of ability power in the very late game and still having the ability to insta-give somebody a lower HP. On the same token, it could be Jungle Aatrox, it could be Jungle Gragas. There are some question marks, and we need to see how the rest of Picks and Bands go to decide where those roles are locked in. Elise would obviously signal that's going to be your jungle champion. So, slight change here on the Millennium side. Creator, we mentioned earlier, four games back to back with the Corky will be running Tristana here. They also get Lee Sin, which is a big one for me on Cotton X. He's made big plays for them this season on that champion. Yeah, and the thing is, Cotton X is just very mechanically sound. Last week, he actually secured that Baron with the LCS big play. You know, jumping out, knocking, I think it was Broken Shot away yeah. before dashing back into the pit and smiting. So Cotton X has got the mechanical skill. You've got a mobile champion in Lee Sin. You've got a mobile champion in Cassadin. we just seen in the previous game, Woolite picked a Cogmore into a Fizz and a Rengar. And while he wasn't punished quite as hard as uh, maybe Fnatic were hoping, you've got a similar situation here. There's not a whole lot of peel and protection for this Cogmore yet. A Thresh might resolve that problem. But for the time being, Tristana with Rocket Jump, Leona with Solar Flare, Lee Sin Cassadin, those are multiple champions that can find their way onto a squishy Cogmore if they so desire. And I'll tell you what, Millennium, we've talked about it many a time, that they love these teams. Number one pick comps, and, and comps where they can just dive all in onto teams. And this is one of them, if I've ever seen one, Leona uh, to jump in there. You've got Maokai locked in. Cassadin's going to be diving in alongside Lee Sin. For me, this composition just screams strength for Millennium. We obviously need to see how well Kerp can actually play Cassidy since they have been banning it away. There is a massive problem on the side of Millennium squad, though, is the lack of safe wave clear. They are very reliant on Creatin using his long-range auto attacks, maybe the saplings as well from what I assume is going to be a top lane Maokai. But if they are ever put into a siege position, Cogmore with Bio Arcane Barrage and Gragas zoning people out with those barrels might make Millennium's life very difficult. But on the same token, if they're playing aggressive enough, they can simply counter a siege by throwing themselves all in. Every single one of Millennium's members has some movement ability to either engage or disengage. And with SK Gaming sort of rounding out their comp and having uh, a, a fair amount of everything, that's going to be support Gragas instead after seeing that one early locked in. Um, so on the side of SK, you've got an Assassin mid, you've got magic damage, you've got mixed damage from Cogmore, physical damage from Aatrox. If they put themselves into a split push position, Aatrox and Ari can do a lot of work. And we talked about disengage and protection. If Enrated misses an explosive cask, SK will lose a team fight. Millennium are going to get on the targets they want to, and there is so much pressure yeah. on, you know, SK's. I don't want to use the word captain, but definitely one of the, the spokespeople for SK was Enrated's involvement in the spring split that helped them level up their game. And it's going to be his involvement in this game that will help them keep Millennium off his teammates. Because if he misses, that's it. It's tickets.
Well, I wonder if this pick, the support Gragas, actually plays into what Millennium was saying earlier, that they know what SK are going to do. We'll find out. But well, guys, we want to know who you think has the advantage with these particular lineups. Tweet hashtag MILWIN or hashtag SKWIN to at LOL Esports as usual. And we'll see later who you think came out ahead. Of course, Millennium were the favorites from the LOL Esports.com vote. For me, this composition fits them, but it's somewhat the same as ever for Millennium. If they don't get rolling with it, they're going to struggle. I would also say SK's comp is also quite reminiscent of Millennium-style comps. If they land a cocoon, if they land a charm, the right explosive cost, and you can start picking off members of Millennium fairly efficiently. So if SK have another strong laning phase, like they did against Rocket last week, they have the tools to stay ahead. And we need to see if they can actually handle themselves now on the Rift. Well, we're going to find out as we get into game here. It's Millennium versus SK Gaming. Halfway into the day, or just a little bit more since we've got five games and that's an odd number. Uh, but <laughs> Millennium here good coming recovery. off the bat. Yeah, good recovery indeed. Cassidy, I want to point that one out again. We've already talked enough, I think, about how Kerp and the rest of the team have been banning that. Picked here for the first time for him. He's running teleport here as well in the mid lane. So teleport Cassidy is nothing new, we, especially in mid. And, and uh, European players have been doing this a long time. I mean, Peke really helped Fnatic get to the semi-finals at Worlds last year with very similar play. My only question about this game is how SK are going to handle these team fights as the game progresses. They have significantly less hard engage. They are reliant on skill shots. And we've seen how competent Jay Re is at his Leona engages. On the same token, Millennium are fairly predictable. You can expect them to go aggressive. You can expect them to go all in. So if SK are uh, psychologically reading Millennium correctly, and then rated, you know, lands the barrels, or Jezzes lands some good charms, or Svenskeren with the cocoons, they can end an, uh, uh, an engage before it's began by blowing up one of the fairly squishy champions in Kotnex, Kerp, or Creatine. Very interesting game coming our way. Kevin running that top lane Maokai, which has been the focus of a lot of bands here as well today. If mine serves correct, so I believe possibly all... Two games. bands. Two bands, okay. Copenhagen Wolves Fnatic went unbanned and unpicked. And this time round was locked up, you know, fairly early on. So Millennium with an invade. Um, we don't have the makings of a lane swap yet for Millennium. But I think this is just going to be an easy buff still. Oh, they don't have vision. This it. is so much trouble. Oh, this is so much trouble. It. They're not seeing it. Freddy's going to walk straight in there. This is real bad news for him. Is he going to flash away? He gets his blood well poked. He's got to win some flash. I don't think it's even worth it. First blood comes in for Jerry there on the owner. A disastrous start. And it was just, it felt like one split second there as he went around the corner I and lost the vision. Completely agree. Absolutely ridiculously close. Freddy stepped out of the bush feeling safe at the exact moment that Millennium stepped into vision. So just unfortunate timing for SK Gaming. And you know what? All credit to Millennium. They had a slightly delayed invade. They were challenging for red. They managed to get the buff and they got the kill, uh, which is just a great, great play. Unfortunately, it landed in Jerry's hands. But I would like to see if Jerry rushes the likes of Boots of Mobility yeah. and maybe tries to impact those side lanes, especially if he can try babysit Kerp. Kerp is going to have a difficult time in the 1v1 against Jezzes if Jezzes is playing aggressively with those auto attacks and looking to zone him away because, of course, uh, of course Kerp is on that melee champion. Well, if you look at the lanes here, we are seeing that 2v1 in the top lane. In the bottom side of the map, though, Kevin has decided he's going to track himself around the map with Cotton X right for the very get-go. And with this, this could be real dangerous for Kevin up top. No Bloodwell did save his flash from that first blood, though, which may be enough to save him. He's put a ward down there as well, which will give him vision of Cotton X and, Kerp, uh, sorry, and Kevin coming in. He jumps away. Yeah, very smart. Kevin was only level one, and he opted to put a point into his Q, his Arcane Smash. So there was no root available there from Millennium Squad. But if Kevin is roaming and playing the buddy system with Cotton X, the threat of those ganks is massive. The crowd control combination between a Maokai and a Leona is huge. Now, SK, let's see how they juggle the aggro if they're going to play that game. Doesn't look like they're going to be dancing back and forth yet. 
But they've got obviously the numbers advantage in the bottom lane, and here's that gank in top lane. Freddy's got flash. Oh. Can he get away? Q's landed here. Connex just going out of tower range. There's a jump though. Good flash from Connex will make sure that he doesn't get knocked up, but they're all over him once again, and he's gonna go low from it. Still as he flash, he's gonna flash away, but the Q was already there, and Connex is gonna pick up the kill. So in terms of trades, SK Gaming get Dragon, Millennium get the first tower of the game. They also secure another kill. It lands in Cottonex's hands, not in the carry. So Kevin. Still going to be a little bit behind in terms of experience. Freddy's been soaking up a little more lane XP. But Millennium with the first aggressive move, that's also quite reminiscent of how Fnatic play their lane swaps. When they have an AD carry that they want to get a safe lane, farmed, and in a powerful position, they go for the 4v1's top. And this is this roaming death squad we talked about. Maokai, guaranteed lockup, point and click. Followed that up with Leono um, stun, and all of a sudden you've got more dead SK members. Well, right now Millennium just taking away that big Wraith and Rated have decided to come to middle. They did spot Millennium moving down from that top lane. We should focus a little bit here on mid because it's been fairly quiet. Kerp has survived these first five levels really with the use of that Crystalline Flask. Not use his teleport here and that's something that he's obviously going to be using if he if he gets bullied out of lane to get straight back in there and make sure that he can keep level on farm. Right now, he's bang even. I would dare say Kerp is going to even try to hold that teleport to impact the side lane. If Creatin and Jayri eventually put themselves in a position where they can 2v2 Candy Panda and Rated, you throw a Kerp teleport in there and all of a sudden you've got the makings of a double or triple kill. I do also want to touch on the fact that Creatin with his early CS and assists picked up a Zeal first. Now we have seen Static Shiv first item Tristanas before, and that could be where that wave clear comes from. Long range auto attack, wave clear from the Shiv, wave clear from the explosive shot, and that might help Millennium push the waves out as well as defend under towers. But we need to see how Creatin uh, spends the rest of his gold if he is going to go that route. Well, until now, they have set up this two versus two now on the bottom side. Candy Panda actually coming out ahead in this year simply because that bottom lane's had no kind of competition. There is the TP into mid lane from Kerp. He's going to come back in there with the Catalyst. So working up towards his Rod of Ages first, we'll get an extra bit of sustain as he levels himself up. And now Svenskren, is this going to be about deep vision and then maybe moving to mid? The ward is certainly there. And that bottom lane pushed up, but there's a pink ward in the tribus which will spot him if he decides to go there. Yeah, we'll see how Sven continues to play the vision game this match. Uh, up until last week, Sven had the lowest amount of vision placed out of all EU junglers. And in their win against Rockat, it was largely Sven's Karen's involvement in placing wards that allowed them to control Yankos. And bonus uh, brownie points to the birthday boy, because you were right, Kerb did teleport back to lane just to stay relevant with CS and not allow Jezus to push that wave out. Ari with the higher ability power on her Orb of Deception is a much faster wave uh, pusher than Kassadin, especially at these early levels. And it looks like Kassadin is the one that's actually getting some early damage onto Jez's tower, thanks to him backing and obviously not having the teleport to fall back to. Yeah, we'll be coming back into the lane with the workings of that chalice. Or the chalice itself, the workings of the Athenes, of course, which it builds up into later. Also means that we get that 1v1 on the top side of the map as well. Kevin on Maokai versus the Aatrox of Freddy. And we've given praise constantly to Freddy on this Aatrox. And I think Freddy in general done really, really well. It's down in the bottom. We're going to see a bit of a trade. Don't think there's too much danger there. Candy Panda got that level advantage, which has given him a bit of a sting in his shots. This is actually a pretty difficult lane matchup for Tristana Leona because of the range advantage that Candy Panda and Rated both have together. If you look at the poke, and Rated and Candy Panda, Creatin's alone, he's just going to get bursted down here. So barrel going in, I think Jerry just wanting to get a ward inside of the tribush. Wisely enough, because Svenskun's there, and that first blood that we were talking about earlier did allow Jerry to get into the sight stone a little bit quicker, which means that he can keep replenishing that vision around his bottom lane. Meanwhile, Jezus going to keep trying to build up more and more farm here by stealing away those rates. There's the vote, and actually, you guys at home thinking that Millennium have even more of a chance than you voted on lolesports.com at 71%. Well, I definitely I definitely think the vote might be rooted in the top lane, and it may have something to do with Cassidy once again. You know, he's got a great win-loss ratio in the LCS the few times he's let through. Cassidy is already actually ahead in CS. It's three, but still counts, um, in a lane matchup that is very difficult for him. 
So, tower dive here, possibility from Sven Skeren. Candy Panda does have Buster Shot available, yeah. and I think Creatin, he needs to play very, very careful. Yeah, and Svenskun just is going to sit away from this one, wait for Creatin. TP is going to be coming down as well. Kevin, he's already there. Creatin trying to stay away from the damage, but Freddy will take him. Svenskun, though, is going to get locked up. There's the repel coming out. It's Freddy that's tanking it. Bloodwell's going to get popped. Svenskun is low. Can they finish off Freddy? Agro's actually gone into Candy Panda. I don't think he saw it here, as he does pop Ooh. someone to heal. He's got away with it. We'll pop a potion. Now Svenskun Goes back in. They're going to take down Kevin. That was a kill for a kill there as well. And now Freddy trying to get away as Kerb comes around the side to kill Candy Panda. Is he finished with this one? He will be as he final two men from SK run away. But a messy affair down bottom. That was a fantastic tower dive from SK Gaming. They actually juggled the tower aggro very, very efficiently. They got the targets they wanted. And once Kevin teleported in, SK even managed to pick a kill off on him before he found one in reply. Had Kerb uh, not used his teleport to go back to lane earlier. That could have even turned the fight around. The very important thing to note is this is a 3v2, which becomes 3v3 and then 4v3. But look at how efficiently SK Gaming managed to dodge and juke around the tower aggro. Sven steps out of it before Freddy re-engages the turret aggro. And obviously once his blood well gets popped, it unfortunately turns over to Candy Panda, which is not the target you really want. And you're 100% right, Joe. I think Candy seen it at the last, last second. That's single-digit HP. And I just can't stress enough. If Kerb had teleport available, look at those low health uh, targets. Kerb may have been able to do a lot more cleanup. And obviously that is uh, hindsight, which is 2020. And Lily, I'm still ahead on kills, even on gold, and ahead in towers. Let's have a look where those kills went as well. Kevin got one just before he went down to leave him 1-1-3. One, one, there's the one there on Cotton X. Kerb, of course, managed to pick one up, and there's one on the support. So everyone except Creatine getting in on the action for SK. One with the top, one with the jungle, and one with the AD carry. Dragon, of course, is live. That was taken, first of all, by SK Gaming Solar because flame. of the push-up by Millennium in the top lane. That's going to be a three versus two. Have they got the damage here? They're actually underneath the tower. Kick comes in. Have they got? They're going to go for Candy Panda, but Creatine going pretty low. Elise going to come in as well. Svenskun chomps down. Where's the cocoon? He lands. Can he finish him up? Oh, the shield. Jay relocks him up at the back there as well. And now Kerb come down. Jesus is going to follow in as well. And Kerb going low. Will he have the damage to finish him up? Another shield. Not enough to save Kerb. And again, it's messy down in the bottom. And it's only a one for one. But it's SK that come out ahead. Not only do they trade one for one in kills, but they got Kerb's teleport at the same time and they should be able to secure this dragon. I think Jezz's deserves a cookie because he was moving down through the river before that fight had even began. By the time Sven Skeren had uh, re-engaged or you know jumped into Millennium who had in, uh, committed to Candy Panda and rated, Jezz's was a few seconds away and he was there the instant Kerp arrived. So that was very, very good game sense from SK Gaming and from Jezz's in particular to be in the right place to turn that fight around and give SK the second dragon of the game and a healthy gold lead once more. Well, 12 minutes in, what a crazy one this is. Top lane, of course, couldn't get involved in it this time because the teleports were down from last time. And if we look at the CS, 70 to 56, which Kevin should actually be able to pull back quite nicely with this next wave coming in. Going to be moving to Rod of Ages on his side. First of all, other side looks like Freddy will be going straight in for that Blade of the Rune King. I say straight in. He's actually picked up a Negatron Cloak just to help him out a little bit with his strength in the lane. Yeah, and there's a lot of magic damage to worry about, especially once Kerb starts getting involved. But if Freddy ever goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Creatine, uh, once Creatin gets some attack damage, that might be scary. But if you look at Creatin's build, he has gone for that static shiv. So, in terms of laning power and presence, Candy Pan is going to be putting out more damage. He's got percentage HP on his bio arcane. He's going to be able to uh, continue to poke down with that living artillery. And Creatin's got no additional AD to really trade with Candy Panda. So, I think we might be seeing Kerp or Cotton X trying to get more involved in that bottom lane and maybe trying to uh, help. Creatin through this weaker mid-game phase. That charm close to landing onto Kerb there. Of course, he has now got that Rod of Ages done, so that's going to be slowly filling up towards Max. Svenskern again. And I think this is the Svenskern that we were somewhat missing for quite a while, and the SK, more importantly, were missing. He's invading again on the red. Yes and no. So while it is good that Sven's doing it, there's actually no vision to back up this play. So Svenskern with good timing and, and having some damage, uh, kills that red buff very quickly, but nobody from Millennium was aware of that. So if Millennium had vision themselves, they may have been able to punish it. 
And this is something that Sven and SK did uh, more frequently than they should have because they got caught up. Now look at the damage on Kerb. Jezus does have Spirit Rush if they want to chase him. No need. Tower is the objective that SK are looking for, and they get it as well. First one of the game for them, and leaves them 2,000 gold in the lead, thanks to mainly those two, uh, two Dragons that they've now had in this matchup. As Cottonex is coming up top, they may have a go on Freddy. He's got no tower there behind him. Here is a push in the jump away. They're going to root him, kick him towards the wall. This is a Blood Well pop, and we'll see if they've got the damage to finish him off. He's going to flash first of all. It's Cottonex that's actually going to be pushed away from this one. That's good damage back. And now Svenskun's coming in as well. This could be disaster for Millennium. There's the damage first of all. He gets away from the Cocoon with the flash, and now Jezus is coming up to the top lane. Ulti going to be used straight in for Cotton X, and that's another one for Jezus. So Jezus once again with a very, very smart roam. He doesn't have teleport, but he's able to interact with the map and interact with his teammates' side lanes very effectively. The cost is, of course, the damage on that mid-tower, and he's losing in CS. 20 behind Kerp. That is about the gold of a single kill. So while Kerp is 1-1-0, one, one, because of the CS advantage, effectively, they should be very close on gold. If you actually look at the gold difference between the two players, Kerp 4,800 to 5,100 Jezzes. It is still very even. And it could come down to Kerp and Jezzes. If they find the right target in teamfights, that could determine the victor and Sven. He's looking for Cassidy. Let's see if he can land the cocoon. Are oh, they going to get the charm onto him? Actually, that's a good jump away from Kerb. Off to the Wraith paper. That leaves now this inner turret in the mid lane completely open. Cottonex is on the bottom side of the Millennium Jungle. He's going to come around. Kerb has already started recalling, and that's about a third of the turret's HP gone, just like that. Yeah, very, very good positional play. Svenskir and roaming from that gank in the top lane all the way down to middle, and just punishing Millennium where they don't have their towers available. So for the time being, Millennium are just falling further and further behind. SK have been playing the lanes very effectively, and they've actually dealt with the teleport power of Maokai and Kassadin effectively. But you have to remember that Tristana, Kassadin, and Maokai are not particularly strong in the early game. They shine in the late game. Whereas Aatrox, Jezus, oh, they're going to jump on Ari. Going to jump on Ari, but Jezus just using his ultimate. No danger there for him, really. So Aatrox, Ari, and Cogmore do very well in the laning phase. And yes, they do scale effectively. But you cannot discount the fact that Millennium, if they get one or two fights with two teleports, they can close this gold lead back. For SK, it's going to be about controlling these dragons even more. And look at the numbers in this bottom lane. That's a good amount of damage onto Sven. Yeah, Sven's going sticking around. There's Jerry throwing down the solar flare, which will lock up two. Kevin's here as well. He's TP down from the top lane. Sven's going going down. He's Kevin that gets that one. Carnix having to go at Candy Panda. Surely can't get away. Will he take the kill with him? He won't for now. Is the passive? No, it's not. Jumps off to curb. And that will be two for zero, just as you predicted. Now, the thing is, Millennium were not able to get any more objectives from that yet. With the very low death timers and the fact that Dragon was not available, yes, SK have lost two kills, but it's by no means a massive swing in power. So Millennium are going to be fairly happy with that trade, but they need to redo that if they want to get Dragon. And here comes Kevin. Oh, flash in from Kevin. And this is a kill. I can't see Jezus nope. escaping from it. And Kerp is able to pick up kill number three there. Meanwhile, Freddy trying to use the presence in that bottom lane to secure another tower for SK Gaming, which he'll take away with easy in the top lane. So if you look at how easy it was to lock down Jezus uh, with that CC, that's a champion with a massive amount of mobility. If Millennium pick the right targets with Maokai, Kassadin, and maybe even Lee Sin, they can just melt through Candy Panda or Jezzes in those team fights. Chain the CC together. Uh, we need to keep an eye on the teleports. Not available for Kevin, is available for Freddy. With Dragon now spawning, Millennium have definitely shown their intent. They don't want to give up the hat trick to SK this early on, but SK, I don't think they're grouped enough. They, if they're going to commit, this is going to be very risky. Dragon will be gone already. Yeah, Jez is nowhere near that one, and there is the Dragon going down. Solid pickup by Millennium. Are they actually going to go in for this? Svenskun taking a lot of damage already. Solar Flare was miles away there from JRE. Not sure he really got the angle off that he wanted to. They're chasing off on the bottom side as Cotton X is going to go down. Creatin going to be exhausted. Oh, it's a fail flash into the wall, and Rated gets that, and Kevin will fall as well. And just like that, it's the Dragon for Millennium for three kills for S. Okay. SK Gaming came in drips and drabs and was split up, but Millennium were not decisive right. enough. Millennium were hesitant to start that team fight. And look at this, they're in retreat mode. If Millennium had focused a target, that could have gone better. And as you pointed out, Joe, that Solar Flare caught 
nobody. So SK Gaming focused the right targets, great exhaustion to create it, and I think the body slam interrupted his rocket jump, and then the flash just didn't get him far enough. So, Kerp, I think he's teleported in. Can he get some kills off the Baron? May try to, Jerry at least will go down. Freddy is pretty low, but Bloodwell passive is available for him. This is Kerp on, on that top side, and they are going to go straight for him, although the mobility of Cassidy may just say that he gets away from this one. Let's have a look. And yeah, no problem for him really there. Just going to head south, and we'll be able to survive that without any problem. No real chasing. Need to come around to this mid lane, though, because it's going to leave Cottonex with a decent little wave to get some damage down. Is Kerp going to join him there as well? You'd imagine so. Actually, we'll Rift Walk over the top of the wall, and that might be enough damage between them here to get that tower. It is. So as long as SK Gaming avoid multiple targets being caught by that hard CC, because they've got damage threats, between Freddy, Sven, Jezus, and Candy Panda. Once Millennium pile in, if SK picked the right targets, that's how they can survive and win those team fights. Millennium was split up, they didn't focus, and they didn't land that CC efficiently and effectively. And SK Gaming have got a very small lead. When you consider there are two Dragons up and a Baron, only 3,000 gold at the 20 minute mark does sound a little bit low. But on the same token, SK have been much more effective at dealing with Millennium's aggression and have been playing very aggressively and very proactively themselves. So we need to see how they handle themselves. I would think that if, if SK wanted to continue to get control, push the side lanes most likely with Freddy or Jezzes, who have some escapes and have some ability to get away, and then once Millennium uh, focus on one person, they can push down objectives like towers or pushing the lanes. So some interesting statistics. I mean, this is a 9-8 game at 20 minutes. If you look at their average CS at the 20-minute mark in both wins and losses, they are a considerable amount behind, in some cases 20 to 30 to 40 CS. So showing how much of a high kill game this one is. A lot of map movement going in. That's the tower, and they managed to knock Jerry back in as well. He's gonna get taken down before he can even throw his ultimate in there. And that's a great move from SK Gaming. Meanwhile, Freddy's on the bottom lane, split pushing like we gave him credit for earlier. They've caught out Cotton X here as well. Here come the rest of the team though. Kevin's right on the backside. Millennium not very healthy, but it looks like SK gonna try to back away from this one. They've got that Baron buff on, of course. Freddy should have the turret in the bottom lane as well. Freddy is still pushing, so there's two things to note. First of all, Enrated did the play perfectly. He zoned away Millennium from the tower, set up the kill onto Jay Ree, who's the primary initiator. While all of this is going on, here comes Jerry off the spawn. Oh, this could be bad. There is Jerry getting right into the middle with the Zenny play. Candy Pan, they're gonna be blown up. Here comes Freddy though from the side. It's a good knock up. He's gonna get three low. Oh, they're all being shattered. And now Coronex will finally walk away. But the triple kill coming out from Candy Panda means that this right here is surely an inhibitor turret. There are minions pouring, uh, pushing in from the lane in 20 second death timers. And Rated played the play perfectly from the mid lane. And Creatin at 20 minutes only just picked up a beat. Sword. The entirety of the last 20 minutes, Creatin has not had the damage to be relevant or on the same page as Candy Panda. With Candy Panda's triple kill, thanks to the Ecathian surprise helping him out at the end, he now has a Trinity Force and a BF Sword, a uh, Blade of the Ruined King, against only BF Sword Pickaxe Static Shiv. There is such a gulf in damage between both of these teams' AD carries. And because SK have got a lot more damage in the other lanes, it means even if they focus him down, the other champions can pick up those kills. So, good engage from Jay Reed. He lands a solid solar flare, but Kerb isn't, isn't blowing people up instantly. And even though Creatin has got, I don't know, 10, 15 auto attacks off, there's not enough damage. He can't mince through people enough. And that was a great Akathian surprise. Everybody clustered up together. AoE damage is a thing. It's a big thing. Untargetable as well. Easy stuff. 646 actually leaves Candy Panda at the moment. As you mentioned, has a good lead when it comes to the items. And we've got a minute until the dragon comes up here. I mean, we're only 23 minutes into this game. We've already seen the first Baron go down. We've already seen the first inhibitor go down in that middle lane as well. SK, this is not the SK that we've really been used to, where, you know, the, the strong first half of this split was a lot about SK Gaming have having a mediocre laning phase and making themselves stronger as the game went on and close out in a fairly long average game time. This has been a lot more aggressive uh, from them and a lot more decisive, I'd say, as well. I completely agree. And I also think Jezzes on Ari is performing fantastically. Jezzes is not a player we traditionally associate with assassin-style champions. 
and he's playing Ari brilliant. His positioning has been good. He's been caught out once by a strong gank, but that's really it. And because SK have done such a good job at keeping Creatin down and reducing the impact of Cassidy, these team fights have all been in SK Gaming's favor. So they're going to continue sieging. Look at Super Minions in the middle lane. Once they realize Kerp is on the back foot, I think SK may even decide to engage. And once again, Enrated with Explosive Cast. He can set something up if he wants to. Anyone comes too close, they're back into the team. As we see there, the base is actually being hammered on by Super Minions. Kerp was called away to deal with that one, and that means that some damage is going to come here on towards that inhibitor. Tony, they've got out Jerry! He does get a solar flare off, but he didn't actually hit anyone didn't go down in the end, so he can go back and heal. But that is a massive, massive component of Millennium's engage. SK Gaming, knowing that Solar Flare is not available, may play even more aggressively. There's a minute on the clock before Baron is up and Dragon is up. So if SK feel they're uncomfortable with the potential of an engage... Oh, they've got Cotton They've got Cotton He's dead, no doubt about that one. Kevin, the next target, he's pretty tanky, but they're working through him nicely. Freddy may just well get his blood well popped, but that might not be enough to stop the Magellan. Goes diving on towards Creator. And they're all so low here. One more ulti out of Candy Panda should do it. They're trying to get onto him. They don't in the end. Well, they kill off Kevin finally on the top side. They can win the game right here. There's super minions and a lot of damage behind SK. They're on the Nexus turret. I think they've done it, Joe. 25 minutes into the game. Kirby is now going to come diving in and Rated going low. They've picked off Jerry. They turn back around on towards the base. Nexus turrets are both going down. Creatin has to jump away. Kirk now having to back out of things as well. The kick will keep them alive. Kirk diving in to get another kill, but he's finished off by Jezus, and now they're left to defend against the Super Minions coming in as SK back away. SK are going to get away after securing a bunch of kills and re uh, uh, removing all of the threat of those towers. SK have played such a strong game, and if you want to ask how do you deal with Kassadin, how do you beat Kassadin, well, you never give him a chance to scale. This is one of the most dominant performances SK has played in a very, very long time. And it is all stemmed from very aggressive plays in the early game. And I, I definitely do not think you can discount how impactful Jesus has been when he roamed to those side lanes. Two or three times at least in the first 20 minutes, uh, 15 minutes rather, he moved to help out either Freddy or Candy Panda, got a bunch of kills, and now with his Void Staff and DFG uh, completed, which he's had for a tiny bit, he's just going to blow up anybody he catches with a charm. Well, the Baron has now respawned as well. 26 minutes into the game. Jesus will first get himself a blue before surely heading over to assist the rest of his team in picking that one up. Millennium have a ward there, so they'll see SK moving over towards that position. We'll surely have to try and stop them getting this one because a Baron buff on this SK team that's already this far ahead, 12,000 gold, just 26 minutes in. That'll be surely too much. So there is one thing SK needs to be a little careful of. Creatin finally has his Infinity Edge completed. His power spike has been so delayed because of the focus and the pressure put to him in, in the laning phase. But if he is given time to get multiple auto attacks off, especially against the likes of Candy Panda or Jezus if they're slightly out of position, they don't have the most amount of armor to deal with his damage. So Kerp is trying to flank from the back line. If Millennium engage and this is done properly, they're just going to lose the game right now. Kerp poking a little bit there onto Candy Panda. We've seen this time and time. This is Kerp's ideal position. We've seen him do it with Fizz countless times in this split so far. And again, he keeps trying to do that. SK got good wards around that curve, though, so they know exactly where Kerp is going to be coming their way from. And I think the safe thing to do here from SK is to back off and move around to Baron. However, again, Kerp's scenario, he'll just head around the back of the Baron pit and maybe jump in to try and steal. We'll have to see about that one, though, because SK Look like they're going to try and lure them in. There they go. They're going to go for Cottonate. Good damage already onto him. Kerp is at the back as well. Who are they going to go for? They seem a little undecided about this one. It's Kevin that's come around. Got himself slowed up. There's Kerp finally coming back. They turn. They kill him off as well. Cottonate will be knocked around. It's a double kill again for Candy Panda. Creatin will try and jump away. Where's the slow? Where's the push coming from the rest of the team? He's Jezus against another one. And now Jay Re and Kevin, low health, are backing off towards the base. But I think they this might be it. The inhibitor did respawn though. There is Kevin trying to delay them somewhat, but it's now all on the support. It's not going to happen. SK are going to win. The SK have definitely won this game. Once again, J. Reed does not connect with the solar flare and a great performance this match. SK pick up their first win of Super Week. 28 minutes and 25 seconds here. An aggressive SK gaming. 
showing that whilst they've had struggling times in terms of form, five games that they lost on the bounce before they beat Rock out last week, that they've put in the hard work here, they've done the work and practice that they needed to do. This is a scary look in SK that we all want to see. I completely agree. And I think SK Gaming played the pick and ban phase fairly smart. When you look at their play style, they let Cassidy through, and I'm going to assume they let that one through on the assumption. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, congratulations, Jesses. What a win. And I mean, I got to ask you, they were mentioning it already. Where did that high level of aggression come from this play in, in this game? Um, well, since we were on a losing streak, we had to figure something out uh, to get back on track. And it was basically just uh, the snowball of insecurity. Like, we lost all our confidence. And yeah, we just mainly like focused at least last week and this week now. We focused on getting more confident and just going more ham. Going more ham. Candy Pandy also mentioned, well, we were slacking a little bit because we were always doing so good in the past. Is that something you could also relate to? Because I can imagine it's maybe different. You're a new player in the LCS. Um, yeah, well, we did pretty good in Spring Split, so we thought that we maybe needed some more solo queue rather than scrims. So we really cut down on scrims, and that was really bad for us as a team because we just started having team issues, and then our confidence just fell down, and it just went down, downwards from that. It was just bad. Well, it was fantastic in this game, and uh, I gotta ask, Ari, we know you love that champion so much, so you did so much in this game, roaming here and there. Is that related to the champion exclusively, or what is going on? Um, I've always loved Ari. Uh, even when I didn't main mid lane, I loved playing Ari whenever I was forced to play mid lane. Um, and yeah, well, like I played it in the start of Spring Split as well. I didn't play too much after losing, though. But I still always loved the champion, and after playing a few games in scrims and solo queue, I feel really confident playing uh, Ari, even against Kassadin. Yeah, it's definitely a pleasure seeing you play Ari. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we're going to see if the Super Hot Crew is the next team that can go back to that third spot just to fall back down again. We'll see if they can beat Reckless and the Dominant Fanatic after a break. <laughs>